Respected viewers, brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to another episode of Life from Kabbalah with me, your host Ahmed Ali. Uh, inshallah, tonight we will discuss a very significant topic, a topic which revolutionized the human race and it also created and aimed to create a better atmosphere uh, for humanity. The topic is human rights. When we hear of human rights, we automatically think of the Declaration of the Rights of Man and the Citizens passed by France's National Institute, Constitute uh, uh, Assembly in 1789. Such movements simply proposes and states the universal rights for men and women. It provides the citizens of the nation to choose whether to live under, uh, under oppression. This means that humans have the right to liberty, property and safety. However, when we examine the question, which is, where did these declarations originate from and where did these laws come about? This, this is why we are joined with our very special guest, Sayyid Mudaffar Al-Qazwini. Uh, so let's welcome him, please. Assalamu alaikum, Sayyidina. Assalamu alaikum. How are you? Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Uh, Allah bless you, inshaAllah. Ajma'een. How are you finding the atmosphere? I mean, we just passed the Al-Qadr. And Alhamdulillah, uh, well, you know, I'm a resident of Karbala, so I'm addicted to the atmosphere of yeah, Karbala. It's, it's very addictive. Alhamdulillah, we have Abu Fadl al Abbas, Hussein alayhi yeah. salam. People place to be. come uh, from all around the world to mm -hmm. be here, so Alhamdulillah, it's a blessing to live here. Alhamdulillah. Uh, Sayyidina, going back to the topic, when we look at Western political systems, uh, we see that they have innovated or somewhat renovated the human rights. Yes. and the rights accord, uh, to humans. However, when we want to search for the origin behind such rights, uh, we see that Ahlul Bayt, and specifically Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib, peace Aliyah be upon him, um, mentioned similar uh, and not also the same of rights course. 1400 years ago. So 1200 years before uh, the declaration that you just spoke yeah. about. 1200 years before the French Revolution. Yeah, it's actually significant. But when you want to um, search for the similarities between the declarations, and what are the similarities between such declarations and what Umar Ali ibn Abi Talib uh, stated uh, 1400 years ago? First, I would like to give you an introduction. Inshallah. And that is about the knowledge of Amir al Mu'mineen Ali Hafdal Salatu Wasalam. Those who wrote uh, this declaration in the 1790s, mm -hmm. they were educated people. But of mm -hmm. course, their knowledge was through reading and grasping words through history. Mm -hmm. Reading history of people, I'm sure, like Ali ibn Abi Talib, alayhi mm -hmm. salatu wassalam. But the differences is Ali ibn Abi Talib and Ahlul Bayt, alayhi salatu wassalam, and the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ingrained in them the knowledge to rule over man. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala placed them as his vicegerents and khalifas on this earth. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them the keys to rule upon man. That's the difference. So when Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salatu was salam says something, it's because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ingrained the solution for society within him. Mm -hmm. Speaking of the knowledge of Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi afwala salatu wassalam, I would like to share a hadith that was given to us by a Sayyid Hashim al-Bahrani. Mm -hmm. Sayyid Hashim al-Bahrani is a very well-known scholar mm -hmm. One of his most famous books was his book of Tafsir, Kitab al-Burhan, Tafsir al-Burhan, in which uh, Sayyid Hashim al-Bahrani used the hadiths of Ahlul Bayt, mm -hmm. the Imams, like Imam al-Sadiq, Imam al-Baqir, and the household of the Prophet to explain the Qur'an, unlike other books of Tafsir. So for example, if uh, he is illustrating and explaining Surah Al-Hamd, he brings a hadith by Imam Al-Sadiq that explains the Holy Qur'an. Mm -hmm. Also, Sayyid Hashim Al-Bahrani mm -hmm. has written a book called Madinatul Ma'ajiz. 
the city of miracles in which he explained and gave us the miracles of the 12 ma'asums. In this book, he speaks of the dispute that occurred between Musa alayhi salam and Khidr alayhi salam. And this is a well-known dispute. It's mentioned in the Quran that when uh, Musa alayhi salam met with Khidr alayhi salam and Khidr killed a young boy, he sunk the ship, he broke down the wall. Musa was baffled. He didn't know yeah. Uh, what was going on? Yeah. You killed a young boy, you sunk a ship, you broke down a wall because Musa did not have the knowledge. Mm -hmm. Of course, Sayyid Hashim al-Bahrani narrates this uh, hadith from uh, Al-Sayyid Wali, Wali bin Ni'matillah al-Husayni al-Radawi al-Ha'iri. Mm -hmm. And Sayyid Wali bin Ni'matillah uh, in his book, uh, in a book which he explained the value of Ali ibn Abi Talib over Ul al Az, mm -hmm. the prophet of Ul al Az, he narrates this hadith. He says, after the three disputes occurred between Musa and Khidr, السلام, they were walking on the shoreline and they saw a bird that caught their attention. This bird came in front of them, he started flying over them. And this bird came, he went and took a drop from the ocean and he threw it to the east. Then he went back to the ocean, he took a drop and he threw it to the west. He went back to the ocean, he took a drop of, the, of, of water, he threw it up to the skies. He took another drop of water, he threw it to the ground. Musa and Khidr were confused. What is this bird doing? What is this bird? We've never seen it before. As they were speaking, Musa was telling Khidr, do you have knowledge of this? Khidr told him no. Khidr asked Musa, Ya Nabi Allah, Ya Kalim Allah, do you have knowledge of what this animal is doing, what this creature is doing? What it's trying to say? Musa responded, no, I have no idea what this bird is doing. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, a fisherman comes. Mm -hmm. A fisherman comes and he starts to speak with them. He tells them, I see that both of you are confused. Are you guys confused about this bird? You've never seen this bird before? Tell him, yes, we've never seen this bird before. And his actions didn't really make sense to us. Yeah. As if he was trying to tell us something. Mm -hmm. He says, yes, for me, because I'm a fisherman and a hunter, I know what this bird is trying to say. This bird, his name is Muslim. His name is Muslim. And because he is named Muslim after the, the noise he makes, the noise he makes it explains or it translates as the bird is saying that I am Muslim, aslamt, Muslim, that I give everything to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh. And this bird was trying to tell both of you, O Musa and O Khidr, that by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that created the East, and he created the west, the Lord of the east and the west, and the skies and the earths. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send a messenger in the end of time by the name of Muhammad. Muhammad and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi will have a successor. His name is Ali ibn Abi Talib. By the Lord of the east and the west, and the skies and the earths, your knowledge is like the drop I dropped into the ocean compared to the knowledge of Ali ibn Abi Talib. And this hadith, Sayyid Wali bin, uh, bin Ni'matullah al-Husayni al-Radawi al-Ha'iri says 
This hadith was taken from one of the disciples of Isa in one of his templates. And it was also written in the Torah explaining to us the knowledge of Ali ibn Abi Talib. The knowledge of Ali ibn Abi Talib is greater than the knowledge of Musa, the knowledge of Khidr. He is the gate of the knowledge of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Similar to that, uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi states, Ulama ummati ki anbiya bani Israel bal afdal. The scholars of my ummah are similar to the Ahsent. prophets. Not, not, not the, the, the infallible, Ahsent. not and the ummah. The reason behind it is because we study the teachings of Ahlul Bayt. Yeah. Without the teachings of Ahlul Bayt, Ahlul Bayt we, we, we wouldn't be anything. Definitely. So if one of us studies the teachings of Ahlul Bayt and truly implements them, then inshallah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also with piety and iman, some of us can reach the maqam of, of the prophets of Bani Israel. Because you know, Bani Israel, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent them pr prophets to a village, sometimes to a household. This is what uh, historians say sometimes to themselves. Oh, yeah just for his immediate family, mm -hmm. a small village of 10 people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent so many prophets to Bani Israel. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to give you this introduction about the knowledge of Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi afdal as mm -hmm. was salam. This is why Ali ibn Abi Talib had the knowledge 1200 years before the French Revolution. Mm -hmm. This is why Ali ibn Abi Talib can speak the way he spoke because his knowledge was engraved and given to him by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the creator of man the creator of society the creator of government mm -hmm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him the knowledge mm -hmm. so inshallah now we will uh, see the first law that was embedded or given by the French doctrine mm -hmm. and I will give you something similar from the words and pearls of Amir al-Mu'mineen mm -hmm. Yeah, wassalam. the first article, the first law that says uh, men are born and remain free and equal in rights social distinct, it's distinguish, uh, distinction uh, can be found uh, only on the common good <laughs> Sorry, yeah, if you can elaborate on that I'll give you a word by Amir al-Mu'mineen. Mm -hmm. Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi afdal as-salati was salam. Salam Allahi alayhi. Amir al-Mu'mineen says, La takun abd ghayrik wa qad ja'alaka Allahu hurra. Definitely. Don't enslave yourself to others when Allah That's subhanahu right. wa ta'ala, your creator created you a free man. Do you see the comparison yeah. between the words of Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi afdal as-salati was salam and the French doctrine? Today, we live uh, in the 20th century, okay? The year 2015. Today, if someone wants to write a paper, a book, there are so many counts of plagiarism. Yeah. Especially if you're doing your master's, you're doing your PhD, mm -hmm. every single word that you have to say, basically, you have to reference it to someone if it does not belong to you. Definitely. But when we look at this doctrine, do you see any references? No. Do you see any That's references? No. So these people weren't the first people to say this. And they never implemented it as you read. It was never implemented. It was just a theory. Mm -hmm. And from this theory, the human rights started to spread upon planet Earth. Yeah. So-called human rights. He's so-called oh, human yeah. rights. But Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi wa afdal salatu wa salam actually implemented. Yeah. It was actually till today no one has implemented these laws but, but Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi wa afdal salatu wa salam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. But we see that Amir al-Mu'mineen actually gave laws. He gave laws in which his workers had to live by or else they were removed from position of power. Mm -hmm. And we saw that through his history. 
Those who did not listen to him, he removed them. Yeah. Even as simple as uh, a judge over speaking and being louder than those who attended his court. Amir al Mu'mineen addresses him and he tells him, I heard that your voice is louder than your subjects. The defendant, you're louder than him. Mm -hmm. This is not allowed and he removed him. Even though he was a very close companion to Amir al-Mu'mineen yeah. He truly lived by his words. Amir al-Mu'mineen says, لا تكن عبد غيرك وقد جعلك الله حرة. So first thing we have to think about is plagiarism. When you go through this article, we see no references. Where did these people come with this idea? Mm -hmm. Where did they come with these eloqu eloquent words? And why are they so similar to the words of Amir al-Mu'mineen? Yeah, 1200 That lived before. 1200 years before them. Yeah. 1200 yeah. years is not a small period of time. Yeah. It's not a sh short period of time. Imagine where humans centuries. will be in 1200 years. Yeah, 12 centuries ago. That's a 12 lot. centuries. Imagine in 12 centuries what yeah. technology will be and mm -hmm. where man will reach. How, how long of, of a lifespan that is, okay? But today, if anyone wants to write anything, they have to reference, mm -hmm. or else they would be charged for plagiarism. Mm -hmm. The second mm -hmm. thing is mm -hmm. that Amir al-Mu'mineen was the only ruler that lived by these laws. Definitely. For example, Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi afdala salatu wassalam. I want to give you examples because those who took power after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi never implemented any of these laws. Yeah. And I will show you how Amir al-Mu'mineen implemented his own they, laws. They just favored their cousins, their, their More than that, friends. people were forced, forced to vote for them. Yeah. For example, uh, for us, and for all Muslims, it's written in Shia books and in Sunni heritage. What led to the to the to the incident of the uh, of the breaking of the ribs of Fatima alayhi salam? What was the reason? It wasn't for to force Ali ibn Abi Talib and his family to pay allegiance. To pay yeah. allegiance. They wanted the votes from Ahlul Bayt. Yeah. But Ahlul Bayt never gave them their votes. Mm -hmm. They forced every single Muslim to vote for them. But they forced Imam Hussein and, and, and they murdered him. Exactly. And, 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 because and Imam Hussein alayhi wasalam, did not want to go by their laws. Mm -hmm. He was murdered. He yeah. was butchered. Yeah, he was, you know, he... He was butchered he was just right to, here where yeah. we're sitting right now. He was forced to... Pay he left Medina. Yeah. He went to Mecca. He couldn't even finish his Hajj because assassins were sent to kill him. He left Mecca and he ended up in Karbala. But the first Khali, the first ruler after, I don't want to call him a Khalifa, the first ruler, the first person who took ruling over the Muslims after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, forced people to vote for him. So did the second, so did the third. People did not vote for them. They didn't, you think people like them? Yeah. No. They knew yeah. that these people are taking their wealth, yeah. they're taking advantage of the Muslims. Even for the second and third, there was no voting. There was no voting, yeah, they, they just, just came. Yeah, it's like a succession. Yeah. Why, we don't know. But Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi afdala salatu wa salam. Read history, what happened between him and Talha and Zubair. Yeah. Talha yeah. and Zubair were close to Amir al-Mu'mineen yeah. alayhi afdala salatu wa salam. So they thought that, you know, just like the first Khalifa brought his family, the yeah. second Khalifa brought all his friends, Uthman brought all Bani Umayyah. They said, well, maybe Ali ibn Abi Talib will bring at least yeah. So they went and told him, Ya Ali ibn Abi Talib, one, give him the ruling of Iraq, one, give him the ruling of Yemen. Yeah. That's, turn, that's all we ask for and we'll region. aid you. Yeah. We'll be your, your kinsmen. Amir al Mu'mineen told them, you, as I give it to you for what? As in for you to do what? 
You want to abide by my laws? We can sit and speak about it. If you want to live by your laws, then no, we cannot. Thus, Talha and Zubair left to where? To Basra. And they made their treachery and treason against Ali ibn Abi Talib in the Battle of Jaman. Mm -hmm. But look at the words of Amir al Mu'mini. Amir al Mu'minin says, Fabayani ala hadha al amr, walaw abiya lam akrahuma kama lam akrah gayrahuma. If they want to give me allegiance, ahlan wa sahlan. If they don't want to give me allegiance, I won't force them. Like the Khalifas before me or the rulers before me force people to give them allegiance. I won't even force them just like I didn't force one person to pay allegiance to me Definitely. or give me allegiance. And Amir al-Mu'mineen before they left to, to, to Basra, they told, he told them, Ya Talha, Ya Zubair, don't commit treachery. I know you're not leaving for Umrah. I know you're not for leaving for Umrah because they told him, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, we're going to go to Umrah. Yeah. But they didn't. They went to Kufa, they went to Basra, and they mobilized troops against Amir al Mu'mineen. In another segment, Amir al Mu'mineen says, Da'utun nas ila bay'ati, faman bay'ani qabaltahu, waman aba taraktahu. I called upon people to give me allegiance. Mm -hmm. Those who gave me allegiance, I accepted them. And those who did not, Except to give me allegiance, I left them. Yeah. You are a free man. They still lived under Ali Bhutan. They lived. Ruling. Yeah. They lived Freely. amongst him. Yeah. More than what the Khawarij did with Amir al Mu'minin. Yeah. Inshallah, uh, uh, we will explain how rude the Khawarij were. They started simply and they became savages against yeah. Amir al Mu'minin. It's unfortunate. Loud mouth. They disrespected him. They, they insulted yeah. him. But Amir al Mu'mineen would give them freedom of speech. I want to see if this happened in the time of ruling of any other Muslim ruler. Even today, today, a friend of ours from Saudi Arabia, Dammam, he's a Shia from Dammam, he told me my cousin was arrested <coughs> and imprisoned and sentenced to 60 lashes and two years of prison. Because he is leading jama'ah prayers in his home with his family members. Have you seen such tyranny? Wow. Have you seen such tyranny? If he had committed adultery, you no one would even look yeah. at him. He is leading jama'ah prayers, ya, ya muslimin, ya nas. <laughs> that's, that's weird. You can't even pray yeah. as a Shia. I can't even pray in Saudi Arabia the way my madhab tells me to pray. And I am lashed, 60 lashes. What has he done? What has he done? It's What's his crime? What's his crime? What's his crime? Mm -hmm. when, 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 when barbarians and animals roam freely in Saudi Arabia. Yeah, and yet the, the simple citizens but a get a person who yeah. is a righteous believer conducting his daily prayers, he is sentenced to two years in prison and lashed 60 times. More than that, when this new ruler came to Saudi Arabia, do you see how they even made children pay allegiance to him? Yeah. In schools, they put a picture of him. Yeah. Someone stands behind the picture, puts his hand, and wow. children come and pay allegiance. <laughs> it's weird to see that. I dare someone not to pay allegiance to him, especially if he's someone as a government official. He would stay as a government official or he would be left alone. Or would he still be alive? Would he be still alive or he, he would end up like Sheikh Nimr and Nimr in a prison yeah. cell without anyone knowing what they are doing to him? And he was sent Are they to feeding death. him? Are they giving him water? Are, you don't even know what's going on. Yeah. And same thing occurred in the life of the rulers of Bani Umayyah, yeah, the definitely. rulers of Bani Abbas, the first, the second, the third. Definitely, no one could speak out. No one can speak out. No one can speak out. But Amir al-Mu'mineen, he's on the member. He allows his
his enemies, his friends and his folks to speak their thoughts. Mm -hmm. But when speaking about uh, human rights, uh, just a short story uh, relating to our topic. Uh, one day Abu Talib, it's a very famous story, was walking in Kufa and he saw an old blind man begging for money. He's a Christian uh, man. Yeah. yeah, when he asked about the si his situation, they told him, you know, he had worked all his life, yeah, but he couldn't save anything for his old age. So, and now he's, but he's a Christian. He's a Christian man. Th that's what he said. He's yes. like, there's no difference in my ruling. Of course. Between Christian and Muslim. Of course. And Akramakum and Allah had So, uh, you know, go and make him, uh, uh, and give, give him from him the from public from treasury. Man, yes. Yeah, so treasury. it's it's significant to see how Ali ibn Talib ruled. And, uh, and now, you know, we, we call ourselves the followers of Ali ibn Talib. And yet we see... And you know, in Mustadrak al-Sahihain, mm -hmm. speaking uh, about a similar topic, Mustadrak al-Sahihain uh, gives a hadith mm -hmm. of uh, the incident of the death of Umar. Mm -hmm. How Abu Lu'lu' why he killed Umar. Yeah, there's a few reasons for that. And the reason was because he worked he was a Persian. Mm -hmm. Now, whether he was a Muslim or not a Muslim, that doesn't matter. But because of his race, he was an Arab, so he's degraded. Yeah. He went to Omar, he's a Khalifa of the time. He's the ruler of the time. Yeah, he, he, he was. Muslim. I'm working, they're not giving me my wage. Do mm -hmm. something about it. If you don't do something about it, who's going to do something about it? Yeah. He threw him out of the courtyard. Yeah. And that caused the reason for Abu Lu'la to take Umar's life. What he thought to himself, what kind of ruler is this? Just because I'm not an Arab, I'm mm -hmm. discriminated. Yeah, with the I'm Persians, working, all the Persians were discriminated. I'm, I'm yeah. working hard labor. Yeah. I'm working hard labor. And they're not giving me my, yeah. my, my, my earnings. Yeah, the How am I gonna feed my family? How am I gonna yeah. feed my children? And of course, when a person is 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 thrown into poverty you don't blame him for anything yeah definitely but al mu'minin alayhi afdal salati was salam he didn't let any of his his his, his people stay in poverty mm -hmm. amir al mu'minin's treasury would empty on daily basis mm -hmm. and he wouldn't discriminate whether it was his brother or it was uh, someone who's not from his family members yeah We'll talk about the story of Aqil, inshallah, the days, days to come. How he treated his own brother, f blood and flesh, mm -hmm. with equality. He, wouldn't, he didn't give yeah, him definitely. a wage more than he deserved. Yeah, he hit up a metal and, and burnt him with it. The, 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 the famous and story. And we'll speak about the story. Yeah, yeah. A, f a famous uh, name for Ali Nabi Talib, peace be upon him, is the father of the orphans. Every him. night he would go him. around, you know, give them milk, dates, yogurt. And then after his martyrdom, he stopped. That's when they realized that it was Ali ibn Abi Talib. So even like personal freedom. Yeah. He gave Talha and Zubair personal yeah, freedom. Yeah, he did. And, yet and what the they wife did. of the Prophet, personal yeah. freedom, even though he knew that they're waging a war against yeah. him. I don't know. They're mobilizing troops against him. Okay. Then Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi wa salatu wa salam gave freedom of commerce and trade. Mm-hmm. He didn't place sanctions upon his people. You wanted to trade, go and come, you're a free man. You have to give your rightful taxes, that's all. You want to go from city to city as a merchant, you're a free man. There is no one from his governance that can stop you. The freedom of trade, the freedom of business, the freedom of commerce, mm -hmm. The freedom of privacy, your, your, your residential home and your residence, you have privacy. He even told his tax collectors, those who collected khums and zakat, that if you go to a city, don't walk towards them in a way that they would be scared from you. Yeah. That they would think, I have to give him something. Because that's how it used to be with other rulers. Yeah. When they used to go to a city, even we see this. And we read this in in, in, uh, in in history, whether it was in America, whether it was in Europe or other countries, 
when when tax collectors came to a city, everyone wreckers. was running for their lives. Yeah, they would wreck the right? city and kill the people. They would wreck the city to get their 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 go golden coins. Yeah. Amir al Mu'minin tells us tax collectors, if you see someone who's willing to give, you follow him. You go ask them. You ask them. From this gathering, is there someone who has to give to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Mm -hmm. Meaning, do they have khums mm -hmm. or zakat or charities? If they do not respond, don't say anything. If one of them responds, walk with him humbly so he's not scared. When he, he goes into home, into his home, don't enter his home. Stand yeah, by the door. By the so door. he doesn't feel like he has to give you more than he needs to give. Yeah, the other rule is... He gives Pushing you, don't ask him for more. Yeah. That's it. He gave you, this is all, all you need to take from him. And those who did not speak out, maybe they don't have to give. And at, at the time of poverty, sometimes Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi afdal salam alayhi afdal salatu wa salam wouldn't even send his tax collectors. Mm -hmm. But Amir al-Mu'mineen says, if a person enters another person's residence, not from the front door, then it doesn't matter who he is. He's a robber. Yeah. He's a robber. And that's the ruling right now um, in, you know, in, in Western uh, political systems. If someone enters without any Of course, you need reason, a warrant. You need a warrant to enter you his house. You need a warrant. And you have the right to, you know, to take and, action. And, w and, and when you go to... E but Amir al-Mu'minin even took it a step further. When you go with a warrant in the West, you show the warrant and, and you, you could and, and you could enter. No, you have to and Amir al-Mu'minin's government, that was not allowed. You tell him, we have business, whether he welcomes you in his home, you can enter. If he doesn't welcome you into his home, you cannot trespass. Yeah. That's significant to... Do you see the difference? See the connection, yeah. Do you see the difference? But uh, speaking of uh, property and rights and safety, uh, the second article is very significant. Uh, it says the goal of any political association in the, in the conservation of the natural rights of man, these rights are liberty, property, safety, and resistance against oppression. Mama Ali Ibn Talib, you, you, uh, you can elaborate I'll on that. But Mama Ali Ibn Talib spoke about that uh, specifically of course. Uh, during his ruling. He said, We will spot, uh, speak yeah. about the 17 uh, laws. Inshallah. And inshallah, I will give you 17 uh, laws. That Amir al Mu'minin yeah. uh, mentioned in his. Uh, Abi Talib, peace be upon him, says, um, he says, a ruler is not uh, a person or in a, in, a, in a condition or a situation of ruling over the people, but to serve um, the people. Of course. Uh, and that's what you know, the, the, the rights course. are mentioning right now. Of course. It's significant to see that when Muawiyah came to Kufa, he told the people of Kufa, I didn't come here so I could serve you. Mm -hmm. No, I came to Kufa so I could command over you. Yeah. <laughs> and it's funny when people don't even read history. Yeah. They don't even open a book. I could promise you, I could swear by Allah, that most people that you see today, especially, I, I'd say 100% of these ISIS members, they've never read one hadith from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. They make They're their own. They're just sheep and they're herded by you know, these people who are leading this agenda. Yeah. Agenda. Rasulullah came by the sword. Rasulullah did not kill one Muslim. I yeah. mean, one uh, disbeliever. Rasulullah brought, yeah. did not raise a sword or a hand against one person. Na'udhu Billah. What kind of lies and deceptions yeah. are you spreading? Rasulullah. Why are you destroying yeah. the, the image of Rasulullah mm -hmm. Rasulullah spread Islam through education. Yes. Yeah. Education, he, love, first, harmony, yeah. peace. But yet, they, they still you know blame Islam for any for any criminal action or terrorist action that goes on. One last point for the first part. Amir al Mu'minin alayhi wa salam also gave freedom of occupation. Mm -hmm. If you see till uh, you know the beginning of the 19th century people didn't really have rights to occupation you were either born a noble or you're born a slave you're born your father is a blacksmith everyone's a blacksmith in your household 
You're born a farmer, everyone's a farmer in your household. And this was at the time of the Khulafa, Bani Abbas, Bani Umayya, the first, the second, to, through the medieval times, to yani, even just now. recently, even now. Even now. But Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi wa salatu wa salam in his government he gave the freedom for anyone to, to, to carry any occupation that he likes. Because Amir al-Mu'mineen said a person cannot carry out an occupation if he's not a free man. He would never love it. You're forced to wash a horse for every single day of your life or a donkey or a mule and to, to pick up its feces. Do you enjoy this job? No. Some people might enjoy it because they like to, to have a farm or not. That's his, you know, desire. Yeah. But maybe his son doesn't. His grandson doesn't. His cousin doesn't. Yet they're forced into it. So Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi wa salatu wa salam says, وَعْلَمُوا أَنَّ النَّاسِ أَبْنَاءِ مَا يَحْسَنُونَ Humans and the sons of Adam will be great and their value would be based upon what they can give to society. If I have the opportunity to become a physician, then that's my value. If uh, I am given the opportunity to become a scholar, then that's my value. If I'm given uh, the opportunity to become a welder when my father was a farmer, then that's my value. I have the freedom to do so, yeah, to learn. Definitely. To learn. And yet they only implemented it now. Since Ali bin Talib. Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi wa salatu wa salam implemented it. So, he gave freedom. He gave freedom in every single way possible. Freedom of thought, freedom of speech. Amir al-Mu'mineen is sitting on, on his pulpit in Masjid al-Kufa. A man from Khawarij comes in the middle of the sermon. Can you imagine how rude someone's speaking? Imagine the president addressing right now, Obama's addressing something, and someone just stands up and he starts speaking. They'll throw him out, throw him out yeah. the room within a blink of an eye. Okay, or any president or king. Amir al-Mu'mineen stays quiet, he tells him, what's your question? He asks, uh, asks a question, Amir al-Mu'mineen responds briefly. He insults Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi wa salatu wa salam. Those who were followers and friends of Amir al-Mu'mineen, they wanted to hold him. You know, how dare you insult Amir al-Mu'mineen yeah. in such a way. Amir al-Mu'mineen from the top of the member in the pulpit, he tells them, no, behold, this man insulted me. He didn't insult you. So it's between me and him. That's his freedom of thought, freedom of speech. And I forgive him. And... It was the same people, the people of Khawarij, that ended up taking his life. Yeah, he died for, you know, seeking justice. And it's, it's unfortunate to see how such a significant character um, can die for, for such a pious... Um, for such a beautiful yeah, cause. Yeah. But of course, shaitan will always mislead man. And there is always people who will work with shaitan. Definitely, because yeah. heaven is not for everyone. Actually, shaitan. <laughs> <laughs> they look like them. Have you seen these yeah. guys with big beards? Yeah, the ISIS. I mean, yeah, I see those yeah. scary-looking yeah. guys, huh? Subhanallah. No nur in their faces. It's. I mean, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala states in the Quran, "Siman fi wujuhim." These guys sujood. also, you see their traces of of killing and yeah. massacring in their faces. And yet they they reference them to Islam. I mean, when we read these, we see that um, uh, the people that actually accuse Islam of being a terroristic religion or, you know, a violent religion, they're, they're ignorant because they, they haven't studied, have they, they haven't have they examined the, the personality of Ali ibn Talib. Have they read the words of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi? You know. and they read the words of Fatima alayhi salam, yeah. Imam al-Hassan, al-Hussein alayhi salam. Yeah, the 12 infallibles. The it's nine... Sons of Hussein alayhi salam. May Allah peace and oh, blessings they, they be upon haven't. them. It's yeah. I mean, even uh, Ali ibn Talib used to say that uh, whenever you start arguing with an ignorant person, that's when you lose of the course, argument. Yeah, 
you, it's never a win battle. Yeah, you, you, you can never. Yeah, whatever you say to him, and that, that's you know, uh, specific people we're not here to mention. L listen, listen to this beautiful word from Amir al-Mu'minin. I mean, just this quote from Amir al-Mu'minin is enough to run a government. Mm -hmm. Honestly, Amir al-Mu'minin says, "Al Haq la yujri la ahad illa jara alayh." Justice will walk alongside with everyone. Mm -hmm. And as it walks with him, it will walk against him. Uh, the rule, ruling of a government will protect everyone and it will stand against everyone at the same time. Definitely. Inshallah. Sorry, I continue. Mm -hmm. And it does it and it's implemented for him and with him. And against him. Inshallah, that relates uh, to the third article. But inshallah, uh, we're you know coming to the end of the. We're coming uh, to an uh, end. Yeah. But you know we have only reached the first one, so I don't yeah. even know if we will finish by yeah. the time of Eid. Inshallah, no, no, inshallah, you know. But inshallah, uh, the viewers will enjoy this. Uh, inshallah, there's very significant information. I mean, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah From you know. us, we are giving nothing. Definitely. These are the. The, the wisdoms of Amir al Mu'mineen, alayhi afdal as salatu wa salam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us his intercession. Alhamdulillah. Inshallah. And for him to attend us at the moment of death, Inshallah. our burial, Inshallah. the time of our hasab, Inshallah. and hold our hands in this life, guide us, give us from his knowledge, Inshallah. from his wisdom. Inshallah. And the only guidance is through Ali Nabi Talib in the Ahl al Bayt. That's, that's our faith. Alayhi. 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 Uh, so thank you very much, Sayyidina, for joining thank us you. tonight. Thank you, brother. And uh, thank you very thank much, you. respected viewers, for tuning in. Um, if you didn't get the chance to view the episode, you can log on to our YouTube channel at Hussein 3 tv uh, and stay tuned for the next episode. And inshallah, we'll continue our discussion about human rights uh, in Ali Nabi Talib. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.